Okay, think of your favorite book. A novel, a short story, maybe a poetry collection. Done? Yeah? Yes? No? Tell me something. Yes. Okay, now forget about it. Um, I mean, and forget a little bit about the idea of literature you might have. What's happening to literature in our digital society? Is literature becoming digital as well? Well, today I would like to briefly introduce you to this new genre of literature that is called digital literature or electronic literature or even elite, short for electronic literature. Many names I know. But what is this? I don't know if you have ever heard about digital literature or maybe not. Digital literature is digital born. So you shouldn't think of your favorite book uh, in a PDF version that you can read on your iPad. It's not that. And you shouldn't think either of ebook readers. Digital literature is created for and on digital devices, such computers, smartphones, and tablets. It mixes different semiotic systems and media, which means that you can read text composed of just linguistic text, those phrases and words, but other texts, many other texts, are composed of text, image, images, and sound. It can be interactive and elements, words, even letters can move around, appear, and disappear. So what is this? Well, one possible definition of digital literature is provided by the ILO, the Electronic Literature Organization. And according to the ILO, Electronic literature refers to um, works with important literary aspects that take advantage of the capabilities and context provided by the standalone or network computer. So, digital literature is a quite new genre of literature. Mm? The first example, the first work of digital literature was created in 1952 and is called uh, Love Letters by Christopher Stracy. Christopher Stracy wasn't um, an, an, a writer. He was a computer scientist and a pioneer in programming language. And he was a friend of Alan Turing. And in 1952, he used Alan Turing random number generator to create combinatory love letters. What you're seeing now is just a simulator. Um, well, but writing love letters should require time, some effort, maybe some pain, if you are writing to someone that doesn't love you. And sadly, a machine can generate as many love letters as you want, and in one click. Well, maybe the literary and poetic result might not be perfect, but think. Already in 1952, a machine could generate love letters, something so human. Well, since then, many things have changed. And technology itself has changed a lot. Uh, computers, smartphones, and the Internet are part of our daily life, and we are always on. So many works of digital literature are nowadays available online for free, which is interesting. And digital literature has transformed itself. Now it's a literature to read, of course, but also to look at, to listen to, to touch, and to play with. But let's have a look, uh, a closer look, to a couple of examples of some recent uh, text. The first one is uh, De Prise by uh, Serge Bouchardon and Vincent Vacquer. It uh, was first published in French in 2010. Uh, the Prise tells the story of a man losing grasp and his relationship with his wife and his son. Well, it's an interactive work 
which means that you need to interact with the text and sometimes to be really inventive to get what you need to do in order to keep reading. Um, in one scene, for example, you can direct the reading direction. If you direct the reading direction in one way, you will read a love letter. If you direct on the other way around, you will read a breakup letter. So this text, besides telling you a story, mirrors your experience as a reader of an interactive digital literary work. While reading online, we think that we are kind of free, we think it's a democratic space. One of these things, the last one, is showing us that it's not always like this. In this scene, uh, the protagonist, the main protagonist, is retaking control over his life. And you, the reader, you are retaking control over the text. Um, the text is suggesting you that you can type whatever you want in a special space. And in fact, it doesn't matter what, you, what kind of letter you try to type, the text that emerge is always another one. This is a new rhetorical figure, huh? one of those literary aspects we talked about before. It is called interfacial antagonism. It means that the text does exactly the opposite that you, the reader, are expecting. You think you can type whatever you want, in fact, you cannot. So, digital literature raises many questions and share elements with literature, of course, but also with art, with the cinema, with informatics, and with video games. There are playful aspects in digital literature, as there are narratological aspects in video games. The next text I would like to show you mix these two genres. It is called, it's called um, Libertagi, Freedom in Portuguese. And here you are invited to navigate into a three-dimension space or environment. Uh, you can move around the text, you can even fly over it, and in fact you can read, actually you have to read and to direct your navigation, your reading direction through your mouse and keyboard, mm? like in a video game. So, Libertagi was created in 2013 by a group of multidisciplinary people, uh, directed by Alcamar dos Santos and Chico Marino. So not just one author, but a group of people working on it. Um, the scenario is the symbolic and metaphoric digital version of the real barrio, real neighborhood, Libertagi, in Sao Paulo, the Brazil. So the text uh, talks about character events of that part of the city. Mm? Libertagi takes us into an, an imaginary island surrounded by water. The text is composed of short stories, poems, images. Uh, there is some sound, here is silence, but there is some sound. And you have also a prison um, that is actually the opposite of the word um, freedom, Libertagi. Um, while navigating, you find some hot spots uh, where you acquire memories of what you have seen. It's like in a video game, you pass from one uh, level to another. But if you leave the island and you go to water, because you are in an island, you are surrounded by water. So if you leave the island, you go to water, you lose your memories, huh? and you have to restart the text from the very beginning, like in a video game. Mm. So we have seen that these texts are quite different from one another, huh? but we have identified some elements that constitute uh, canon characteristic of electronic literature. Of course, there is much more. We have seen there has been a change of style in electronic literature from the very first text uh, to Libertagi, for example. Uh, we have identified some literary aspects 
for example, the rhetorical figures and tackled some new narrative strategies. We have seen that the machine flows gives us a stable test, uh, and in this sense, we talk about a static of ephemeral or a static of the flow, because the same test cannot reappear exactly the same way to different readers, like in Libertage. So, digital literature is a recent genre of literature in constant transformation with possibility yet to be discovered. Now, rethink of your favorite book, and now go and navigate and discover your favorite text of electronic literature. Thank you.